Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. And today I want to talk about this new little telescope from SV Boney. And it's a great little telescope for beginners and for intermediate astrophotographers and visual astronomers. And this is the SV503 with the built-in field flattener. I'm amazed at the output of this little telescope. I'm going to show you some of the examples, but first let's talk about this scope in itself. Well, first of all, it, it's not very heavy whatsoever. It's only uh, weighing at uh, 2.74 kilograms, which is what? Just a little less than seven pounds uh, imperial measurements. And it comes as is like this. Uh, it does not come with anything else uh, other than what you see here. It does have a, a Vixen style plate at the bottom for mounting on top of your uh, uh, mount or your uh, tripod. I myself had it mounted on my AM3 equatorial mount and it worked perfectly with this weight. It had no problem whatsoever with uh, guiding and tracking. And uh, it comes with uh, uh, two hoops to attach the scope to the uh, Vixen style plate. And it does have some standard screw uh, holes in the uh, plates, uh, hoops themselves to attach different products. For example, I did attach a shoehorn to put my finder scope on the top to keep it centered uh, with the uh, center point of gravity, which makes it a little bit easier for tracking and guiding. And the uh, focus, well, this is a great focuser. Uh, it's a uh, uh, rack and pinion tile style focuser, and it's also very sturdy. It's no toy. It's all solid metals, no plastic parts, except for the handles. Well, the handles, they're metal too. And uh, here's the one-to-one uh, -one ratio, and over here, is your uh, 10 to 1 ratio for fine focusing. Now, I used uh, a, a Batonoff mask to help provide the focus uh, for perfect focus uh, with this system. It'll be nice to add a uh, electronic focuser to this if you have the uh, uh, means to do that. But you don't need that uh, with this scope. And once you get it in focus, you can just lock it down with this little screw right here. And that'll lock your focus down so you, you can't move it and it'll stay locked. So, that part's really, really good. Let's take a look at some of the other features uh, with this scope. The SV Boney SV503, it's a 70 millimeter objective with a focal ratio of 6.78. So let's call it uh, F7. And it's a telescope for adults and for beginners. And as mentioned, it does have the dual speed focuser, 70 millimeter lens. It is a two inch interface and it has the one and a quarter inch adapter. So if you want to add say a, a, a eyepiece uh, or two and switch eyepieces around for visual astronomy, I myself use a camera. So I just stick with the two inch interface. Uh, the S503 astronomical telescope has a back focal length of 70 millimeters allowing for precise focusing. And it also has an adjustable lens hood, which I usually pull out all the way and lock it down and then wrap a dew strap, a SV bony dew strap, as a matter of fact, around it to help prevent the dew. I live in a very humid environment here in my location. And the, uh, the SV Boney S503 has a built-in field flattener. And this is really great because it really keeps the stars round all the way to the edges of the field of view. And let's look at some extra information about this wonderful little scope. It has extra low dispersion glass, an SFPL51. And that really aids in reducing chromatic aberration. And looking at the uh, rack and pinion uh, focuser, the dual speed rack and pinion focuser uh, is, is easy to get precise focusing, even using eyepieces. Uh, for cameras uh, and so forth and so on, it makes it very easy to accurately focus your scope. So let's take a look at the scope itself, and this is it right here. And I got the dew shield extended, so you can see the the length of this is not all that large. I put a little uh, shoe on the top of this uh, uh, ring and uh, attached my guide uh, scope here with the guide camera. And my main camera over here in the back is the uh, ZWO ASI 071 one-shot color camera. And I do have a filter wheel associated with it. And uh, it sits on the AM3 mount. Now, uh, I also have on here the uh, SB Boney dew straps. I got it on the, uh, the scope and on the guide scope. And one thing nice about these dew straps is that they have a controller here that allows you to set the degree of heating, low, medium, or high. 
And uh, I'm in a humid environment, but I had it on low all night last night, and it was no problem whatsoever uh, with that. So that's very good. I also have the the SV Boney power pack right here, the power box and a USB uh, box, and it's working like a champ. Uh, one thing that's very important that you use a very good USB port uh, cord, USB 3 to USB uh, B, and uh, that's very important. That's the uh, power that connects from the box all the way down into the main computer. My main computer is way down here at the bottom, and it's just a little uh, a mini computer at that. There it is right there. And this is the cord coming down from the SV Boney power box and USB hub. And then this is the, uh, uh, well actually this is nothing. That's, that was just a cable I was using to connect the monitor, but uh, this is my power in. The power in, I have my own power supply uh, for this computer. And I also store the computer down here. So these are the only two cords coming down from the top of the system of the rig and the whole system rotates along with the telescope itself. So uh, hopefully no power snags associated with this. So how impressed am I? Well, let's let the pictures do the talking. And I tell you what, they're talking loud. So let's take a view of some of the examples of the images I took the other night. I took about an hour of each time uh, for these images because I only had a brief window of clear sky. So many nights of clouds lately and I had this open window. So let's take a quick look. First of all, let's take a look at M20. And this is the raw image of M20 and let's just stretch it. and. Uh, uh, there you can see um, very clean stars uh, from edge to edge uh, with this here and a little bit of bloating in the blue, uh, but overall uh, very impressed. Look at that. You can see on the very edge, you can see that double star right there. So I'm very impressed with this and the upper corners. Look at those stars. They're round on the lower corner again, round stars. And uh, again, over here on the other corner, I'm very impressed. Look how round they are. And uh, going up to the upper right corner, yeah, that built-in field flattener is really doing the job. All right, let's take a look at the uh, stacked image. And this is the stacked image on processed uh, of the uh, M20 and the M8. M20 over here is the Trifid Nebula and M8 is the La Lagoon Nebula. I had the camera angled 90 degrees so that you, I could pick up both fields of view. Actually, uh, the Lagoon Nebula is below the Trifid Nebula. But again, uh, yeah, a little bit on the blue stars here. This is with the uh, IR um, UV IR uh, filter, a luminance filter with that. All right, let's take a look at the uh, processed image with the uh, UV IR uh, filter. And there you can see it right there. And a little bit heavy on the blue stars as expected with any type of refractor, you're gonna get a little bit haloing on these very bright blue objects. And uh, But the haloing is at a minimum with this particular telescope from others that I have viewed in the past. And this is with the uh, uh, SV Boney dual band filter and uh, it uh, uh, filters out a lot of the blue so hence uh, uh, these stars here aren't so uh, much bloated they're much better looking and the, uh, the rest of the nebulosity is very strong particularly in the hydrogen alpha and the uh, uh, sulfur 2 area of the spectrum very vivid uh, display there all right now let's go with the uh, the ring nebula, very small nebula. This is with this telescope and there you can very barely see it. And um, you need a very large telescope to pick up the ring nebula. But uh, this is again, this is with the dual band, uh, the SB Boney dual band. And there you can see the ring uh, zooming in on it. And again, the stars, they're round. This was about a, I think about a 40 minute uh, exposure here. And here it is with a UVIX, UVIR filter. And, uh, a lot of blue left over in that and my post-processing was a little um, heavy on the blue I suppose. Here's an object that I just love this this the uh, helix nebula here it is with a dual band filter uh, with the um, SB bonies and uh, there you can see a beautiful helix nebula uh, with this this telescope the SV503 with the built-in field flattener again looking on the edges those stars are, are round as round can be and uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, this is a great image uh, of the Helix Nebula. This is only about a 30 minute image. You need about 
uh, well, gosh, at least six hours, if not you know, 30 hours of imaging on this Helix Nebula. It's very low in the southern skies in this, at my latitude. I'm at 32 degrees north latitude. Here's another small but popular nebula, the uh, Dumbbell Nebula M27. And here it is in the luminance filter or the IR, UV IR cut filter. And again, a lot of the blues showing up at the, <laughs> A lot of stars in this area of the sky. Look at all those stars and how round they are. And yeah, I got some haloing affecting on the, the blue stars, but not that bad. Not that bad at all. Okay. And uh, here it is with the, uh, the uh, dual band filter. A uh, little less stars uh, because it's filtering out more of that light, but shows the um, dumbbell very well. Again, this is only about a 45 minute exposure so i'm very impressed with the the details and the clarity uh, from this telescope the sv503 here's the pleiades with the dual band filter and uh, a little rough right there let's take a look at the uh, luminance filter it came out a little bit better um, this one's heavy in the blue light as you know the pleiades this was rising at about four o'clock in the morning i got this image it's about 45 minute exposure here i think maybe only 30 minutes so you you need a bit uh, of time but you know over here i think i did pick up yeah there it is right there that right there that's the hidden galaxy uh it's about what 370 million light years away it, it, it picked it up in about the 45 minute exposure even with this small telescope i usually practice using a very large uh, aperture telescope to try to pick up that uh, little the little galaxy there all right here's the uh, the veil nebula and uh, oh, I just love this one, uh, so, sometimes known as the Witch's Broom Nebula, but the Western Veil Nebula. Um, and the um, bright star, I forgot the name of the star, but look at that. Very little hailing effect. Uh, it came out really clean uh, along with all the other stars. You can see the, some double stars showing up over here. Of course, now this is uh, post-processed uh, in Pix and Sight, but all the way to the edges of getting good stars over here and I wanted to show you this uh, because um, I took the same image except rotate it 90 degrees with the uh, my old uh, triplet telescope the Orion triplet telescope 80 millimeters so it's just 10 millimeters bigger the SV Boney is a a dual with the field flattener built in the Orion is a triplet and you know there's not much of a difference here I tell you what there's not much of a difference when you look at the two um, the um, when you look at the two over here side by side you other than you know out of rotation by 90 degrees uh, they look very much the same the difference this telescope here costs about a thousand dollars this telescope here cost about a little less than four hundred dollars so again, half the price for this, basically you're getting the same image. Plus this image here is a, a, the one over here, the Orion. That's about a three hour image. Uh, this one here is about a 45, maybe 60 minutes at best. Uh, and they're both using the SV Boney uh, dual band filter. So um, yeah, I, I'm very impressed with that. All in all, the SV503 with this built-in field flattener is an excellent scope for beginners and for intermediate uh, astronomers as well and astrophotographers. And with this, you can definitely see what's above up in the sky. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, and they're all in a sky near you. And with this little baby, you can see them all. Thanks for watching. Bye.